Hey everybody, this is Matt Reisinger with Reisinger Homes. Welcome to my video blog on green building and building science. I'm here with John Umfris from Austin Energy. Uh, he's part of the green building program. We just had a meeting at the Home Builders Association on the way the city of Austin is interpreting codes for spray foam polymers. We're, uh, as you know, in the uh, city of Austin currently under the 2006 um, international uh, codes. And we are in section uh, R314, foam plastic. So get your code book out and check this out later. Um, John, can you tell us what's happening with, uh, with city interpretation? Yeah, Matt. In the last four years, we've gone from two companies installing spray foam insulation to over 20 now, and a lot more builders are starting to use it. And we realized with the adoption of the 2006 IRC, there were specific requirements on what you needed to do when you were installing foam in different areas, whether it be the attic and whether or not there was attic storage involved. There was a lot of confusion with respect to how the products were being used, as well as how these you know, jobs are being inspected. And so what we're trying to do is get some consistency you know, across the board so that builders, spray foam contractors, everybody involved knows kind of what the rules are and can follow them. And mainly we're talking about uh, conditioned attic spaces. All the houses that you've seen of mine on my video blog or my blog, we're doing conditioned attics where basically the spray foam is applied right up to the roof deck and follows the, the roof line on the house so that all the mechanical equipment uh, in that attic is enclosed by that foam. It's all power vented equipment. There's no atmospherically invented equipment. And so what we're talking about is where that foam is applied now, the city has changed a little bit of their enforcement uh, based on this code as to what's happening in those spaces where normally, or I should say in the past, we did not have to uh, put any additional coatings on those. Now the city is requiring that all those uh, foams that are placed in attics here in Austin provide what they call an ICCES report. John, can you tell us a little bit about that report? Right. Um, a couple of years ago, the foam industry decided, uh, agreed to a new protocol for flame and smoke spread testing. It's called AC377, acceptance criteria 377. There was a uh, new test uh, procedure designed around that. Almost all the spray foams on the market that we're aware of went through that new test procedure and now new installation requirements have been published by this what's called the ICC Evaluation Service, Independent Third Party Evaluation Service. And uh, we're, what we're doing is following the recommendations and the guidelines in those evaluation service reports. And that get, ties back to, to the code requirements in 314. Got it. And so it's been on the books for a while, but we have been, you know, slow to digest, slower to di digest those code requirements, kind of get everybody is, you know, on one sheet of paper, if you will, and try to get everyone sort of moving in the same direction. So uh, there's, just to summarize a little bit, there's two types of addicts, I would say, in Austin. Uh, most addicts in Austin have some uh, HVAC equipment up there, uh, and they're not just a bare attic with, with nothing up there. So uh, under this code interpretation, there will be two types of attics really for about 99% of what's happening. Attics that are accessible only to reach mechanicals, let's say to, to uh, change out HVAC filters or service equipment, or attics that have that plus some amount of storage space. And uh, the city is, is really um, pushing that most attics uh, where you can store something would be, would be under the higher standard of storage space. And so John, can you tell me as a builder is, is spray foaming in their attics, what do they need to do now to make sure that they're uh, compliant with code? Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. If they're, using, if, they, if, if they're designing the attic to be used for storage, they need to separate the foam from that area, that storage area, with, with half inch uh, drywall. And that would be the, more. the prescriptive path? Yes, a prescriptive path for a thermal barrier. There's okay. a difference in the code between a thermal barrier and an ignition barrier. Okay. If you, if ad, access to the attic is limited to the service of utilities, whether it be an air handler unit or a water heater, mm -hmm. uh, in, for some types of products, you have to cover some, at least the vertical surfaces of the foam. So that's uh, you know, gable walls, knee walls, things like that with either a prescriptive ignition barrier, and there's about eight of them listed in the code. There's um, quarter inch plywood, things like that. Metals or sheet rods, yes, things like that. Correct. Or with a intimacent coating, basically it's, it's an ignition barrier coating that was tested for that particular foam product. Got it. And so you can find the you can find which which coatings are approved for which products by going to the ES reports. 
and what John's talking about is that's really a, a specialized paint that, uh, that reduces the flame spread or the smoke spread of that uh, spray foam polymer to meet the, uh, the code requirements. And then if, if you're going to a storage requirement, you need that thermal barrier and you really need to look up those ICCES reports because there's really only one or two products in the market that will allow anything but sheetrock to be used as a thermal barrier. Yeah. Keep in mind that if you have an attic where, let's say you've got a uh, upflow air handler in a, in a, in a mechanical closet mm -hmm. that's down in sort of what we think of as a conditioned space, right. at least here in Texas, and the water heater is in the garage or somewhere else, you, you aren't required to have any kind of coatings on the foam in that attic as long as it was not being used for storage. Right. So, right. so there's different ways that you can limit the, limit the cost, limit the amount of work, extra work you have to do to use foam products. Bottom line though, if your house is under construction now, you need to look at this because it's a, it's a rolling change. This is based not on a permit start date, but it's happening right now. In fact, one of my houses just a couple weeks ago uh, got caught up with this and it caught me with my pants down, so to speak. So if you're building in Austin, look this up, know about it because houses that are in construction right now will be affected by this and future projects that you're working on, you need to uh, put the money in the budget now because it's going to change how you're building those houses. Thanks for joining me, John, and I appreciate all your help in, uh, in making a better city for us. My pleasure. All right, Thanks. buddy. Have a good day. Talk to you soon.